tried to add to the Word of God, and you're not supposed to. So it's written on both sides, and it's sealed with seven seals. We talked about uh, the number seven last night, and, and there's a beautiful teaching. You just want to look at things that are sealed in the Bible, in the book of Daniel. Daniel is told that, that once he has the vision now and writes it down, he says, seal up the vision. And so those visions are sealed, and, and they are not, they have not been unsealed yet, okay? So I remember back in the 90s, Jack Van Impey came out with a set of videotapes for only $49.95 plus shipping and handling. You can get his video teaching called Daniel Unsealed. I don't think so. Okay? Because it has not been unsealed yet. It's going to be Revelation chapter 6. The seals are going to come off. But we have seven seals. Seven is the number, like we say, for perfection and completion. It's also a reference to the Holy Ghost, the seven spirits of God, as mentioned in the book of Revelation. You see them in Isaiah. In fact, let's turn there very quickly. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 11, you have a, a mentioning, a listing of the seven spirits of God. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah 11, verse 1, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, capital B, shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord, that's the first one, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Number two, the Spirit of wisdom. Number three, understanding. Number four, Spirit of counsel. Number five, and might. Number six, the spirit of knowledge. And number seven, the fear of the Lord. Okay, there's your seven spirits right there. Okay, that's what they represent. Um, if you want uh, the spirit of the Lord, references who's in charge. The Holy Spirit will always point you in the direction that God is in charge. Now think about a false spirit. A false spirit will lead you away from the Lord being in charge. Amen? Um, I believe that this Bible is in charge. Okay? So, someone says, I am spirit-filled, and yet they are going away from the authority of the Scriptures. That is not the Spirit of God leading them in that direction. Amen? It's not. You have um, the Spirit of wisdom. Okay, the opposite of that is foolishness. Okay? You have the spirit of understanding. The, the opposite of that is ignorance. Okay? Uh, the spirit of counsel. There's godly counsel. Jesus is the counselor. Okay? Um, you, have, you have false counsel. Anytime in the Bible you have somebody in authority, you always have somebody counseling them. You remember in the book of Esther, you had King Ahasuerus. And who was it that was counseling him at first? It was Haman. And Haman hated God's people, hated them, wanted to see them dead, wanted to have them all killed. And Ahasuerus gave his ring to Haman. He gave authority to Haman and said, Haman, you just do whatever you feel like doing. Okay, that was a false counsel. And then here comes Esther. Okay, and she is wise counsel. She gives him the true and correct counsel. And then he has Haman hung on the very gallows. He's hanging from a tree. You think about that. And then now we have, uh, who is it, Mordecai? Now he's been given the ring. Okay? And, I just, and Mordecai comes riding in on a white horse. I just love that. Amen? Okay? But anyway, so we have the and counsel and might, which is power. And the Holy Ghost will always give you power to stand. A false spirit will cause you to fall backwards. Am I telling the truth? Okay? You have the spirit of knowledge. And then you have the fear of the Lord. The, the true Holy Spirit of God will give you an awe and a reverence for God's power and what He can do to you. Amen? Did your parent, you know, Jimmy talks about his mama. He talks about my mama. Because his mama and my mama were correctors. They took and gave us correction, didn't they, Jimmy? Okay? Okay? 
And um, I had a fear. I had a love for my mom and daddy. And uh, I, I still do. But I had a fear. That there were certain things I did that I did not want my mama to find out about. Because if she found out about it, I was, I was dead. Okay? Uh, worst whipping I ever got. I mean, the worst whipping I ever got was the one I had to wait on all day. My mom was away helping a, a family in our church move uh, to the other side of the state. And, and so early in the morning, I went down to my friend's house and we lit his, we lit his tree house on fire and burned it down. Yeah? And I came, I, I went running home and my sister called my mom, my good sister, who's preparing our lunch right now. She called my mom and my mom got on the phone. She said, son, when she said, you need to go in your room and you need to close the door and you pray because when I get home, I'm going to kill you. Okay. And I'm not kidding you. I sat in that room and I dreaded, I dreaded her coming home all day long that day. And when she finally did, she didn't forget what I had done. I mean, she took care of business with me. You see, I love my mother and I love my father. They corrected me. And I have a reverent fear for my parents. And I have a reverent fear of God. The Holy Ghost of God, the real Holy Ghost of God, will lead you, will lead you into a reverent fear of the Lord. Okay? But see, you don't see that in a lot of quote-unquote Christians anymore. What you see is a false spirit that is leading people to believe that they are not only equal to, but in some cases, above God. That is not the Holy Spirit. Amen? So anyway, and, we, and when you are, the book of Ephesians tells us that when you are saved, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You are sealed with that. When, I mean, when you get really saved, when you get good and saved... You have these spirits in you, don't you? And you can tell that there's something different about you. And you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're saved because the Holy Spirit has given you earnest of the waiting redemption that lies ahead. What a beautiful, beautiful teaching the Bible gives us. And I don't, I don't know if I'll get time to get into it. But anyway, Revelation chapter 5 again, and verse 2. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? And to loose the seals thereof. And I, my Coggart's name does not show up anywhere in here. Neither does yours. Neither does Pope uh, Benedict. Neither does uh, uh, Billy Graham or Rick Warren or anybody else. Nobody is worthy to open this book and loose the seals. Nobody is. And so, and God convicted me about that here a long time ago. And... Uh, he just sort of said, Mike, when you preach, it better not be you. It better be me. Okay? And I said, Lord, I like that. And John said, uh, well, verse 3, And no man in heaven nor in earth nor under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And I, and I want to say this, that I, I spent a lot of time last night really trying to lay this idea out. That God is always in the book. And he's never out of it. Never. And, and what we're seeing here, and this goes along with this email, this a testimony somebody wrote us last night. And they were watching our service last night. And uh, they were telling me, giving a testimony of what they're seeing going on. And I can tell you that, the, and you all know this, that the movement, and you see it more and more that's going on right now is that there is a move in, in churches away from the book. And what they're saying is, is they're saying, in, in some cases they're saying, God is, is, you've got God, you bound God inside the Bible. No, I didn't. God is bound by his own word. Amen? You know that old saying, a man's as good as his word? That applies here. God is only going to be what, is, what this book says he's going to be. Okay? And so they've they're come up with all kinds of ways of removing Christians away from the book. But I would rather be a, a person of the book. Amen? The people of the book. That's who we want to be. If the book says it, then it's right. And if the book doesn't say it, I'm not buying it. Amen? I don't believe it. 
Okay? So, and that's what I tell people about this slain in the spirit stuff that everybody's going around doing. Oh, you got to be slain in the spirit. You've got to have the Holy Ghost in you. you got to be slain in the spirit. When you show me two verses in the Bible where that is a biblical doctrine, I will, I will bow and kneel in front of that because I believe what this Bible says. But it's not there. In fact, it's preached against and not toward in the Scriptures. Amen? So don't let anybody convince you that you're missing out on some big deal that God's got. But you can get it now if you go to this big conference that they're going to have here. When they lay hands on you, you can get this thing. That is not biblical. And don't let anybody make you feel bad because, and they will. They'll, and I've been around them. They make, they make you people that don't believe that nonsense, they make you feel about this big because you ain't got what they got. You poor thing. If you just get drunk in the spirit, you'd really be somebody. You know what? They can have it. Amen? They can have all that they want to. And so anyway, I, I'm trying to just lay this foundation that the book, the book, the book, and the Word is in the book. And if the Word, and if you've got a Word and it's not in this book, it is not from God. If it's not written down, and here's another thing, and I'll talk about this this afternoon, here's another thing they do. Oh, I'm, oh wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, oh, yeah. Oh God's, oh, God's giving me a word. Oh, wow. Oh, pray, oh, listen, brother. Let me tell you. And they're going to give you some kind of nonsense that they, that they visualized inside their mind or something like that. Don't let them do that. Don't let them come to the, oh, oh, God's giving me a word. Ooh. I mean, you see them how they do it. Don't, I, did, I do that pretty good, don't I? Okay? And I, I got, and I had a guy one time in this church years ago said, Mike, I want to give you a word. Oh, yeah. You know, like he was, boy, he was some big spiritual thing. And he told me a bunch of nonsense. In fact, there by the sound, he told me a bunch of nonsense, and I'm just going, okay, whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the book of Ephesians, here's the real word of God. Um, if, if you want a word of knowledge, Right here, read it. You want you want you want to you want to operate in the gifts of the spirit? Operate in all sixty six of them. You want a word of knowledge? Read it. You want a word of wisdom? Read it. You want to you want a gift of faith? Here it is, right here. Faith covered by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Um, even if you want a gift of healing, he sent his word and healed them. Is what it says. Okay. So anyway. Um, it's all about the book, the book, the book, the book. And here is John. He says in verse 4, he said, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. There's not been a denomination, a movement, a ministry, a minister, an evangelist, uh, an apostle or anybody who has, ever, who has ever been adequate enough to open the book. And it does. It, we ought to weep when we realize that God had things hidden for years. But now that Christ has come, he now intends to open those things that have been concealed. He now wants to reveal them through the pages and through the scriptures of the prophets we read last night. Through the scriptures, the writing down of what the prophets said. He wants that known. I'll tell you something else that's funny too. Is that every time some bad thing happens, like this, this uh, earthquake in Japan, all these, all these charismatics come out of the woodwork saying, Oh, I prophesied that. Oh, God showed me that in a dream. Two weeks ago, God was showing me that. They always write about it on the internet after it happens. Okay? And I was in a meeting down in Birmingham, and uh, was there in a hotel meeting room, and this guy come in. He looked like, I mean, he looked like Elvis Presley. It's just kind of funny. He just come in, and he went around before the meeting, and just going to everybody, bragging about how old. Well, he said, God showed me, God gave me a vision of 9 11 before it ever happened. God, boy, God told me this. And he went around to everybody in that room. Bragging about how spiritual he was, but because God had given him a dream and a vision about 9-11 before it ever happened. And in my mind, I'm going, you're a fake, you're a phony, and you're a fraud. Because if God really gave you that, why were you not down there stopping those people before they went in that building, warning them, hey, God, there's fixing to be two airplanes flying this building today, don't go in here. Why weren't you there, you little coward? Amen? I just, I ain't got no time for that kind of nonsense. Amen? I lost my place. Revelation chapter... I had to teach those, I had to teach those Kenyans what chasing a rabbit meant. And I said, I'm going to chase some rabbits now. And they just kind of went, I said, you don't know what that means? No. I said, America, we got